Be very, very quiet. I'm, I'm hunting, hunting wabbits. <laughs> <laughs> Surrounded by federal agents, a loaded gun pointed at his head. Those moments of Court Stack's life replay in his nightmares. I was wondering why would someone point a loaded gun at my face? I mean, what, what does this have to do with anything? It's open the door and point a loaded gun at someone's face who's in an office in a management position. It made me feel really scared, kind of helpless. It was his first and only encounter with law enforcement. He will never forget it. Neither will the other employees at this small Arkansas water bottling company. Their vivid accounts of that day were used to produce an accurate reenactment of the federal raid on Mountain Pure Water Company. We saw all of the um, cop cars and the commotion and nobody could come in. They come in with black vehicles un unmarked, blocked every entrance. There was probably 40 to 50 agents, blocked every door. They just come in full speed. They had surrounded the facility uh, and entered all the doors and secured the whole whole premises when they came in. Yes, I was scared to move because, you know, they had guns on and you couldn't really move, you couldn't go nowhere. First of all, it was ridiculous. I mean, there was there was nobody here that needed um, land with, with uh, firearms or to be guarded. Well, it was almost like you'd watch cops or something or watch these drug raid shows where they were kind of come through the door just everybody storms in and just kind of pushing everybody to the side. And there's police everywhere with guns and it just blew me away. I didn't know what was going on, you know. I thought maybe it was drugs or it was after a felon or something, but I mean they have a lot of police. I felt violated. Um, I felt the company was violated. Everyone here, we were all in shock. And they came through the door and they pushed us over to the wall and uh, went down through the hallway. Uh, they were very serious. They, they were very well uh, intending to take control of the facility and to intimidate us in the sense of, of complying with them. We were saying, oh my gosh, what's going on? And uh, but as far as being able to really say something to each other, we, we couldn't. We had them all top, on top of us, um, no matter what. You know, I mean, they were everywhere. Uh, they, they were everywhere. At first, everybody thought it was some type of drug raid or something because there were so many people or, you know, so many cops. But this was no drug raid, no violent criminals hiding inside the walls of this facility. In fact, employees here were shocked when they discovered the real reason behind the terrifying paramilitary Gestapo-style raid. This raid was about securing paperwork concerning financial transactions of the company's owner, John Stacks paperwork they would have gladly shared at the request of a single agent. 
No need for an aggressive raid by 40 to 50 armed agents. Well, in my opinion, the raid itself was totally unnecessary. The government has subpoena power with a grand jury. They could have subpoenaed anything they wanted to, and I've known John Stikes for a long time. John would have given them whatever they subpoenaed. There was simply no need to bring 40 or 50 officers out here and, and storm this place like they did. I don't, I don't think that we have anybody in our facility that, with our background checks, that have any kind of active criminal background. And yet, you've got a tactical team that entered our facility and treated every one of our employees as though they were involved in criminal activity. And that was pretty amazing to me. I, I, you know, the same information that was gleaned, if they would have walked in the front door, they could have had. Uh, no reason to, to think that there would have been any issues or any opposition to that, and surely not from our employees in the working on the floor. John Stacks, the company's owner, was not at the plant when the raid started. He and his other son, Ryan, an attorney, were shocked to discover upon arrival that Stacks could not even enter his own facility, nor provide his employees with a company attorney. He says one agent even threatened to arrest him for obstruction of justice. They told us to, to sit down. They told us to shut up. They told us that uh, they would deal with us in their own time uh, and told us again we needed to leave or they would, uh, would arrest us for obstruction of justice. And, you know, I told them this was my place of business. I was the owner and I thought I had a right to know what was going on. My, my father had asked to, to go in and they said no, he could not. I had asked to go in they said no. And I said, well, as an attorney and representing Mountain Pure, I would like to be present in, in what uh, searches or, or re things you're conducting. And they said no. And we found out they were conducting interviews. And I said, well, I'd like to set in on those. We were also told no. And what I'm going to say is a direct quote. We're the federal government. We can do what we want, when we want, and there's nothing you can do about it. I was blessed to have a father that fought against Nazis in World War II. It's my generation's turn to fight. The problem is, it's on this country we got to fight. I'm not a militant. They've thrown the Constitution away. We did not have lawyers. I requested that a lawyer be brought, the corporate attorney be contacted. That was thrown out the window. My wife saw this on TV. I could tell by my ringtone she was calling. I could hear my phone ring. I'm not allowed to answer it. Am I arrested? Am I detained? No one would tell us anything. Don't worry about it. Just sit down. They threw our liberties out the window. They treated us like third-class citizens. If people are not outraged, they need to be. This used to be America. Now it's not. The language they used, the profanity they used uh, over and over again, screaming and hollering at me, uh, calling me and referring to me as old man Stacks. And then one of the law officers there uh, told me, this, kept telling me, well, why don't you just touch me, old man Stacks? I'll show you what a federal officer can do to you. And did everything he could to provoke me and literally hovering over me and, and literally spitting in my face as he was hollering and screaming at me. I remember thinking, to me, it was almost like something you would see in a, in a fictional movie. I, I couldn't believe what was occurring. It's, to an extent, I felt like I was in a third world country, the way they were treating us. Meanwhile, inside the building, agents shut down plant operations. The assembly line came to a screeching halt. All employees were herded to one room, their cell phones confiscated, as well as pocket knives or other items that could be perceived as weapons. They disconnected all the phones. They disconnected the Internet. We was just left waiting. It was embarrassing to see them just bust the door with no one knowing what was going on. And then they act like the employees were just a bunch of drug dealers. Again, I would have never fathomed that, that something uh, to this extent could take place, you know, in the United States. And uh, it, it, was, it was one of the wildest things, that, the craziest things that I've ever been a part of. We were being tra treated similarly to what you would... Um, with, with some type of, of, of terrorist, essentially. Uh, it, it, they pretty much told us uh, under these circumstances we really didn't have any rights at the time. And it, it was, uh, I don't really know that I can put words to the feeling, uh, to, to what I was feeling other than, than just disbelief. What agents did next further compounded that disbelief.
They seized computers, laptops, employees' personal items, flash drives, and financial records. Eighty-two boxes of materials. There were two legal problems with the raid. Okay. Uh, first, I think the warrant for the raid was invalid. The Fourth Amendment requires that the items to be seized in a search be described with particularity in the warrant. This warrant, in describing the items to be seized, to be seized, referenced the attachment. The attachment says that the officers can seize all evidence relevant to a violation of the statutes listed on the warrant. There were no statutes listed on the warrant. So they were either authorized to seize nothing or to seize anything they wanted to, and they seized anything they wanted to. So in my opinion, the warrant was invalid. The other was officers are authorized by law to detain folks in the area to be searched long enough to assure the officer's safety. I think they greatly exceeded the amount of time necessary to ensure their safety because they detained folks for several hours here. Wouldn't let them leave, wouldn't let them call a lawyer, and I think that was illegal. Eight months has passed since the raid. Mountain Pure Company officials say 85 percent of the seized items have not been returned. Employees who spent most of the day and evening with agents also made another discovery about the raid and the agents involved. I tried to visit with a few of the agents and overheard a few, a few of the agents talking, and it came to my attention that a majority of the approximately 50 agents had came from out of town, east coast, west coast, all over the U.S. That was really troublesome in that we already have a lot of issues with our government spending and trying to, to stay within budget, and, and you take, you know, 30-plus agents and you fly them in from all over the country and you put them up for a night and you feed them, or maybe two nights it was. What is the expense of that? News agencies flooded to the small company, and as news accounts of this big raid hit the airwaves, Stax was flooded with phone calls from business owners around the country. They shared horror stories about their own businesses subjected to armed, aggressive, intimidating raids by the Justice Department and the Criminal Investigation Division of the Internal Revenue Service. Stories that sounded eerily familiar. Duncan Outdoors was one of those businesses. You know, I just kept saying, what have we done? Are we being arrested? And I did ask, I said, we need to call, do we need to call an attorney? And the one guy looked at me and said, you can call an attorney, but won't do any good. We're the IRS. We can do anything we want. We're the IRS. We can do anything we want. Anything we want. Uh oh. Be very, very quiet. We're hunting Elmas. <laughs>